I think I, I, I'm probably not so different than uh, Vis, Visconti or Ford. It, it's, you're not, um, you're very concerned about details. You're very concerned about um, uh, every aspect of the production being right. Uh, you want everybody to do their job well. You want the grips to be superlative. You want the electricians, the sound. You want everybody to be their best. And of course you want your actors to be at their best and you want to give them every support that you can give them uh, in order to elevate their performance as high as, you know, to get them to go beyond their limit or what they perceive their limits to be, to get them to act in a way they've not acted before ever. And, um, and that is one advantage of of having written the screenplay is you know it, you know all the dialogue by heart. And so you don't have to keep saying to the script girl, let me see that scene. You know the scene and you know every word and you know what you meant by it and you know what the underlying, um, you know, the, uh, the subtext of every scene. And, and uh, you're immediately at home with your actors and you know how to deal with their fears. For example, I think when I, I have a suspicion that when Visconti worked with Callas, Maria Callas, uh, because as you know, he directed many operas as well as all of the great movies. I, I mean, his achievement will never be, never, never be matched. And that's why I think he's so, so very special. But I'm sure that from the first time he worked with Callas, he, her, her acting on stage began to change. I mean, granted she was a fantastic singer with this incredible range and power in her voice and was a driven, you know, a driven performer to do the best that she could. But I think she learned from Lucchino Visconti that no gesture on stage or walk or any movement on stage should be empty. One shouldn't walk about on the stage just to walk about on the stage instead of just standing there and singing. That every gesture had a meaning and the meaning always had to revert back to the story, the libretto of the opera. What are you singing at this point? What are you feeling at this point? If you just, it's, it's the same is true with ballet dancers. Choreographers constantly have to remind them, you know, when you reach out your arm in a certain way, uh, you know, you're not just making a graceful gesture with your arm. You're, uh, you know, you're reaching out to this baby that you long to, you know, you long to touch again. It's a, it's a, it becomes a different gesture. The gesture becomes full, even when you don't realize why it's, it's a better gesture. And I think from him, she understood, she came to understand that, um, Every, every movement on stage, there was a reason. And critics uh, took note of how she moved across the stage so well with uh, Lucchino Visconti's, uh, under Lucchino's direction. And, uh, and her gestures were, were full. And that's because I think he, he, nobody was better with, with actors. And um, I, I think that her work was probably immeasurably improved by um, his, his, his contact with her. Because before Lucchino was in opera, you know, um, the directors were unknown people. The conductor was everything. And there were no star directors. I think maybe there were a couple of names bubbling up that we're talking about in the 40s and the 50s, you know, or so. And uh, in, in the, the era right after World War II and during World War II. And, and I think that because of him, um, partly because of his work, uh, that, um, that directors of opera, Franco Zeffirelli, production of blah, 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 you know, that the directors became an important part of opera, and rightly so. Zeffirelli's 
uh, film version of Romeo and Juliet was a huge success because he understood the very simple truth of the situation. Romeo and Juliet had been done in Hollywood and I'm sure in England everywhere for ages. And it was, you know, it was always very stuffy, played by 45-year-old actors, you know, and you have some 45-year-old in a tight saying, you know, Romeo, oh, Romeo, you know, we're at the Romeo, it's ridiculous. I mean, Zeffirelli put it to the two actors very simply. He said, every time you see each other and every, every moment that you're talking, every time you, you just lay eyes on each other, all you want to do is fuck. Because they're 14, they're 15, what else do they want to do? And it worked. It worked. It was brilliant. Because you, first of all, it w there were people of the right age playing the parts as they were intended, as it was written. And of course, all the older people made sense because they were all a bunch of old farts, as they should have been. And uh, it was the opposite of everything that had become bef that had come before. And so, for the first time, Americans got to really understand. For the first time, they understood Romeo and Juliet and the tragedy. And it's a tragedy of youth, not a tragedy of two fifty-year-olds in tights, you know. Uh, professing their love, playing just the poetry. They were playing the inner truth of what Shakespeare wrote. And so it was a huge, huge hit uh, in, in America for the only time that I know of which Shakespeare was such an overwhelming public hit. And it's only because people understood the intention of the actors. And I think that all Lucchino tried to do was, with Callas, was the same, the same thing, was Pay attention to the character.